tonight to be in the house of the Lord. And to see each and every one of you that has made the effort to come out tonight. We're so thankful that you are here. If you're visiting here with us at Crossroads, don't feel like a visitor. Join in with this hour's service tonight. I love the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm so thankful as we was coming over the road, I just began to think about the one that created the heavens and the earth, the one that hung the moon and the stars and keeps everything just like it needs to be and has all this control and all this power. He loved you and I enough that he sent his only begotten son to die on the cross of Calvary and shed his life's blood for the remissions of sin. And he arose on the third day that we might have life. And as it says in the book of John, have it more abundantly. I just praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ here this afternoon. I hope and pray that everyone has had a good day today. And I hope as you've come into the house, you've come expecting a blessing from the Lord Jesus Christ. I get excited when it's time to come to church, just, just anticipating what the Lord has in store for this hour. So let's all be willing and obedient to follow the leadership of the Spirit of the Lord. And I know if we'll do this, when we leave this place, we'll be able to say it's been good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Brother Dennis will be coming in just a little while to share what the Lord has laid upon his heart. I know he covets your prayers, so you be praying for this hour. And above all things, if there's somebody here that does not know the Lord Jesus Christ, we hope and pray this is the good day that you come and accept him before it's everlasting too late. Appreciate Brother Don and Will being here with us uh, this afternoon. Want them to feel free in the Lord also. Have y'all spoke to one another tonight? Well, some may have and some may not. So let's stand to our feet, shake hands one with another, make everyone feel welcome. <laughs>
Taylor, we enjoyed the song service tonight and thank the Lord for the opportunity to be back out in his house. I'm glad the Bible teaches us that the Lord desires for us to gather out together and to worship him. The Bible says to worship him in spirit and in truth. He told us where two or three are gathered in my name, he said there I'll be in the midst of them. And we appreciate Crossroads setting aside this, this time this week that we might gather out and worship the Lord would be our hope and desire that uh, we might uh, all grow closer to the Lord and worship Him. He's certainly worthy of our worship. And if there be one here among us that's never been saved, may this be the good night that they might come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Before we read, we do want to go to the Lord in prayer. I'm going to ask Brother Will Glaze, if he would, to lead us to the Lord in prayer. Almost <coughs> kind and gracious. Heavenly Father, God, I'm so thankful... God, that you saw fit, God, to give us another opportunity to come out uh, to your house, God, as unworthy as we are, uh, to send down that of uh, your Holy Spirit, God, and the sweet peace uh, that comes along with it. Father, I'm so thankful, uh, God, that your presence is in this place, uh, in this very moment. God, I pray uh, that you would go with us throughout this service. God, I pray that you would take Brother Dennis. God, I pray... God, that you would get him out of this world, God, and get him over uh, into the other side. God, that you might uh, revelate his mind and guide his tongue. God, you know uh, the hearts and the minds and the conditions uh, of the soul of each and every one in this place. God, you know uh, what we stand of when we don't even know uh, ourselves. God, I pray that you might send down uh, that of a message from on high, uh, God, to feed our souls, God, and most of all, if there be one among us, God, that has a hungry soul that is starving uh, for the Lord, has a soul that has never uh, been saved by the grace of God. I pray uh, that as you break the bread of life, God, I pray that your convicted power uh, might go out, God, and they might know uh, that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. God, I'm so thankful uh, for your love and your mercy. I'm so thankful that your word tells us uh, for why we were yet sinners. Uh, Christ died for us anyway. God, I'm so thankful. 
God, that you sent your only begotten Son. And I pray, God, that we might all, God, come together in one mind and one accord and lift up the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Will. If you have your Bibles, uh, we're going to read out the 22nd chapter of Genesis. 22nd chapter of Genesis. And certainly, as Brother Will prayed, Jesus said, If he be lifted up, he'll draw all men unto him. So we pray tonight that he might be lifted up in this hour of service. Beginning in the first verse of the 22nd chapter. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went into the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. And they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. And they came to the place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him upon the altar of wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah-Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Now I want to turn over to the book of Hebrews in the 11th chapter. And the writer of Hebrews gives us an understanding of this passage of Scripture beginning in the 17th verse. It says, By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. May God add his blessing tonight to the reading of his word. And this is a a passage of scripture, a story from the scriptures. And and by story, I mean it's a true account of the events that happened, but it's a, it's a story that we read in the scriptures. And for many of us, for many people, it's a, it's a hard scripture because it appears that God is uh, instructing his servant Abraham to go and to murder his son. But I want to say two things about that. First of all, that was never God's desire nor His intent. His intent was to try Abraham's faith. And that was the purpose of of the test that God gave to Abraham. And let me say to us today that when we are tempted to sin, it is not God that tempts us. The Bible says in the book of James that God tempts no man to sin. That's the work of the devil or the work of our own flesh as uh, James talks about uh, there in the the first chapter of James. 
Secondly, I thought as we looked at the book of Hebrews, the mindset that Abraham had. God had promised Abraham that through his son Isaac that the nations of the world would be blessed. He had promised him that his seeds would be as multiple, as, as, as in number like the stars in heaven or like the grains of sand there at the ocean. And Abraham had the kind of faith that he believed that if God wanted him to take his son's life to offer him as a sacrifice uh, on an altar that God had the power uh, to raise him up again. And that was the, 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 the commentary that the writer of Hebrews provides about this passage. But I said all that to say this. I want us to see the real beauty of this passage of Scripture. I don't believe there's any passage uh, in that better illustrates or paints a portrait of the, of the plan that God had for uh, bringing a salvation into the world. And as we look at this passage of Scripture, I believe that Isaac is representative of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that Abraham is representative of our Father in heaven. Even the very place that this took place, Mount Moriah, is of great significance. So let's look at the story and uh, see what God has for us to understand in this story. The Bible said that God came to Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And Abraham responded, he said, Behold, here I am. The faithful servant responding to the Lord. And God said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. And Isaac is like Christ in that he was the child of promise. He was the one that God had promised to Abraham even in his old age. And to Sarah, uh, who was well past childbearing years, God had promised that he would have a child. Abraham had tried to do things other way. He had suggested to God that maybe his head servant could be his heir. And God said, no, it won't be him. Sarah had suggested that Abraham go in unto the handmaid and uh, Hagar and she conceived. But God said, this is not the child of promise. He said, you and Sarah, although you, you're, one of the scriptures said, though her womb be dead, uh, she shall bring forth a child, a child of promise. And that was Isaac. And Jesus Christ, the Bible says, is the only begotten son of God. All of us, we call, we, and we are, the Bible teaches us that when we come to Christ, we become heirs and joint heirs with Christ. Paul said that God has given unto us the spirit of adoption whereby we cry out, Abba, Father. Each one of us have been grafted in. Each one of us have been adopted into the family of God. I'm a child of God uh, through His grace and through His mercy. But Jesus Christ is the only begotten of Son of God. He is God in the flesh. He is the very essence of God. And the Bible said that He was the promised one. The prophets prophesied of Him. Isaiah prophesied. It said, And a virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son. Jesus was that promised child and uh, that, that uh, just as Isaac was promised to Abraham, Jesus uh, was the promised child that uh, God would send. The Bible said that when God spoke to Abraham, notice Abraham's response. The Bible said he rose up early in the morning. He didn't wait. He didn't tarry. How many times does God impress us to do something and we let the moment pass? Maybe you're in a meeting and God impresses you to stand up and give your testimony. And it's burning down in your heart. And uh, But you let the moment pass and uh, somebody else speaks. And the next thing you know, uh, that opportunity is gone and you've missed that blessing. How many times has God maybe said, speak to that person and uh, invite them to church or ask them, talk to them about the Lord and uh, you hesitate and you wait and uh, the next thing you know, that opportunity is past. Abraham was faithful. God spoke to him and the Bible said that he rose up early.
early the next morning and he gathered his servants and he gathered his son Isaac and he gathered the wood and the things that he would need for the sacrifice and he began the journey down uh, to Mount Moriah to the place that the Lord would show him of. And the Bible said that they traveled and on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and he saw the place afar off. I don't know what it was about the place, but the moment Abraham saw it, he knew that was the place that God was drawing him to. And I think about Mount Moriah. I think about Sony Mountain. We're all familiar with that. I've grown up in the shadow of Sony Mountain my whole life. If I said, Roger, I'm going to meet you at Sony Mountain, where exactly would we meet? Would we meet at the big tower? Would we meet at the Indian seats? Or would we meet where the roundhouse used to be? Um, Sony Mountain is actually a pretty big place. And God told him here, he said, uh, he said when Abraham lifted up his eyes, he saw the place that God had showed him, the place that they were to meet. And I want you to understand something about Mount Moriah. It's a very special place down through the scriptures. We read in the book of 2 Chronicles that uh, this was the place where the first temple was built, where Solomon built the temple. In the third chapter, in the first verse, it says that Solomon began to build the house of of the Lord at Jerusalem in Mount Moriah. And it was the place where uh, the, the Lord appeared unto David his father uh, in the threshing floor of Orion, the Jebusite. So this was a very special place, a, very pl- a place that has great significance down through the Scriptures. And Abraham lifted his eyes and he looked to that place. May we lift up our eyes and look uh, the tonight to the place that uh, the Lord would have us to see. And the Bible said uh, that Abraham, uh, the Bible said he told his servants, Abide you here, uh, the lad and I will go yonder and worship. And he said, And come again. Oh, we're coming back. He had faith to believe that God was going to bring Isaac back. And uh, the Bible said that Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and he laid it upon Isaac, his son. Now, we know that Abraham was about a 100 years old uh, at the time that Isaac was born. We believe Isaac was probably a teenager, an adolescent at least, maybe 12, 14, 15, 16 years old uh, by the time this event occurred in the Scriptures. So Isaac was a strapping young man and his 110-year-old dad or so uh, would not would have been an older man. And I know people live longer then, but certainly uh, he was an old man and uh, he laid the wood over on Isaac. And the Bible said that uh, that he uh, t- took the fire in his hand and a knife and both of them went up together. And the Bible said that Isaac spake unto his father as they made their way up the mountain. Isaac had seen his father many times offer sacrifices unto God. And I can see as he was walking up and Isaac was thinking, he said, Father, and Abraham said, Here I am, my son. And he said, Behold, we've got the fire how we've got the knife and we've got the wood. He said, where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And notice what Abraham said. He said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for the burnt offering, for the sacrifice. And that's exactly what God has done. He has provided the Lamb of God that uh, went to the cross of Calvary and shed His precious blood as an atonement uh, for the sins of the world. Uh, Abraham in faith looked at his son knowing what the, the terrible thing that lay ahead of him, knowing what God had instructed him to do, and yet he had faith to say, God shall provide Himself a Lamb uh, for the sacrifice. The Bible said that, uh, the Bible said, and they came to the place which God had told him of. And the Bible said that Abraham began to build the altar. uh, And he laid everything out just the way uh, that it had to be, just the way that it needed to be. And the Bible said that he took Isaac and he laid him uh, there on that altar. 
And I don't believe Abraham had the physical strength to restrain his son. I believe that Isaac uh, was an obedient son, though he didn't understand uh, everything maybe that his father was intending. But I believe he trusted God, and I believe he trusted his father. And and Isaac, I can see him as he laid himself down uh, there on that altar. And you know, the Bible teaches us, Jesus said this in one place. Jesus said, no man taketh my life. He said, God has given me the power to lay down my life. And he's given me the power to take my life again. Oh, Jesus willingly took upon himself all of our sins. Jesus willingly went to the cross of Calvary. The Bible said that he could have called legions of angels at any moment and been delivered from the cross. It was not the, it was not the nails that held Jesus to the cross. It was the great love that he had for you and I. I can imagine when it came time to nail a prisoner to the cross that they would resist with everything that was in them. Oh, if they stretched out my hand to uh, drive a nail in my hand, I would fight them with all that I had. I would resist uh, with every ounce of strength that I had. Uh, But I believe when Jesus lay there uh, on the cross, I believe he willingly uh, laid his hand there uh, for the soldiers that they might pierce his hand. Uh, Isaac willingly laid uh, himself on the altar that his father had prepared. Uh, Jesus willingly laid himself on the altar that his heavenly father had prepared. Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane, uh, the Bible said he prayed till his sweat became his grave. What a wonderful God we have. What a wonderful Savior we have. How much love does he have for us today and how he loves the world today. Uh, Jesus prayed, the Bible said, till his sweat uh, became his great drops of blood. He said, Father, if it be possible, uh, let this cup pass from me. Uh, Nevertheless, not my will, uh, but thine be done. I see that same submission uh, in, in this son of Isaac as he laid himself there on the altar that Abraham had prepared. The Bible said that Abraham stretched forth his hand. Oh, can you imagine how horrible that was uh, for Abraham as he took the knife uh, prepared to do what he thought God uh, wanted him to do. Uh, Listen today, the love of God, uh, the Bible said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son uh, that whosoever believeth in him uh, should not perish but have everlasting life. Uh, Can you imagine the heart of God the Father as he saw his only begotten son uh, nailed to the cross of Calvary uh, take upon himself the sins of the world and give his life as an atonement there for our sin. I believe Abraham had tears in his eyes. You know, if you've ever watched The Passion of Christ, there's a lot of scenes there that are pretty dramatic, but one uh, kind of uh, touches me is when Jesus is hanging on the cross and these big drops fall out of heaven, uh, raindrops, and they're like tears from uh, the very eyes of God. I, I believe today that uh, Abraham had tears in his eyes as he prepared uh, to take the life of his son but uh, the Bible said that uh, at that very moment there was an angel of the Lord uh, said Abraham, Abraham and Abraham said here am I and the Bible said he said lay not thy hand upon the lad do not thou anything unto him for now I know that thou fearest God seeing thou hast not withheld thy son of thine only son from me Uh, And Abraham lifted up his eyes and uh, the Bible said he looked and behold uh, behind him a ram uh, caught in a thicket. Uh, God had provided a sacrifice uh, that would be, that would result in his son uh, receiving life and raising up from that altar alive and well. 
God has provided that ram for us. Jesus is that sacrifice how where we can have our sins forgiven, how where we can become a new creature in life, in, 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 a new creature in Christ, where we can live. Uh, you know, the Bible says, He that hath part in the first resurrection over such the second death hath no power. Uh, I guess you can interpret that a lot of ways, but this is how I interpret it. I was dead in my trespasses and sin. Uh, as a little nine-year-old boy, I was lost and bound for a devil's hell. Oh, I was dead to, to the Lord. Oh, but when I received the Lord Jesus Christ, oh, He raised me up to walk in a newness of life. I've had part in the first resurrection. Oh, brothers, in the second day, oh, has no power over me. Aren't you glad of that today? Oh, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Oh, he that believeth in me, though he were dead, oh, yet shall he live. Oh, he that believeth in me shall never die. Uh, Believeth thou this. Uh, Listen today, children. Uh, I don't know if there's anybody lost in the house tonight or not, Uh, but if you're here, you've been saved by the grace of God. Uh, The very fact that you've been saved ought to bring joy to your heart. Oh, it ought to make us want to rejoice Oh, in what the Lord has done for us. Don't you know Abraham rejoiced when he saw that ram caught in the thicket? Uh, He took that ram and he placed it on that altar uh, in lieu of his son and he sacrificed him there uh, unto God. Uh, The Bible said, and Abraham called the name of that place uh, Jehovah Jireh. Uh, The Bible says, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Uh, And I can't prove this uh, on a map, uh, but it is my persuasion uh, that that very place uh, where Abraham was sent uh, to offer his son Isaac. Uh, as I said, Mount Moriah uh, eventually became Jerusalem. Uh, it's where the temple was. Uh, and there, no doubt there were little hills uh, all around Jerusalem. Uh, I'm persuaded in my heart uh, that that very altar where Abraham built uh, was the same place that Jesus, uh, the Bible said he was led out of the gates of the city, uh, out of the city of Jerusalem uh, and taken to a place called Golgotha, uh, which meaneth the place of the skull. Uh, Luke calls it Calvary. Uh, I believe he walked up Calvary's hill, uh, and I'm persuaded he came to the very place uh, where Isaac had been laid there on the altar. Uh, Abraham said, Jehovah Jireh, for it shall be seen in this place of uh, that that was foreshadowed in Isaac's in God, in Abraham's offering of Isaac, of uh, that that was reflected of Christ uh, was fulfilled some two thousand thousand years ago when Jesus walked up old Mount Calvary and was nailed to an old rugged cross and shed his blood for the remission of our sins. Listen today. There's a lot of good stories, a lot of good scriptures, a lot of good events that are recorded for us in the Bible. And let me tell you this, if you want to understand this book, you need to look at it through the lens of the cross. Uh, God's plan of salvation uh, is about, uh, has never changed. It's the same in Genesis as it is in Revelations. Uh, Jesus Christ came. He is in every part of this book. It's his story. Uh, It's a story of God's plan of redemption. Uh, When you look at something in the Old Testament uh, and you relate it to what Christ did for us, How beautiful a picture it paints. It paints a beautiful picture. Isaac the son, Abraham the father, and God provided a sacrifice. Uh, He did through his son Jesus Christ. If you're here and you've never been saved by the grace of God, I want to invite you to come. I want to invite you to come. Jehovah Jireh, behold, it shall be seen in this mount, in this place. God shall fulfill that, that he's prophesied. The plan of salvation shall be complete. Abraham was blessed. Isaac was his descendant. Jesus was a descendant of Isaac. And all down through the the lineage of time, uh, Jesus was the one that was to come that would bring deliverance to the world. May God bless you today. There's no other name given uh, greater than the name of Jesus. His name should be lifted above all names. While we get a song tonight, if you're here and you've never been saved, we invite you to come. Church, let's worship the Lord tonight. If you know Jesus, just worship Him in your heart. Tell Him you're thankful for what He's done for you. Uh, God didn't require, I'm glad when my children reached the age of accountability that there was a remedy that had been provided. Uh, there There was an offering that had been made that was perfect and it was sufficient for the remission of their sins. While we stand and sing, we invite you to come. Just follow the Lord.
just follow the Lord and what I've said. I've preached the message that the Lord had placed on my heart. And God bids you be like Abraham was, and just be obedient to whatever it is He would encourage you to do, and worshiping Him and praising Him. And if you're here and you're lost, won't you come and be saved by the grace of God, Brother Donnie?
bless you, Barry. Anyone else tonight? I might thank Lord to save my soul. Bless you, God. Thank you, God. You know, I, I say right now in here. Amen. Right now, no, no. Er, uh, middle 60. Amen. As you say, like just a few days ago. Thank you, God. 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 Thank you. Anyone else? Any impression upon anyone's heart tonight? Anything? Dennis, you got anything yet? Hey, thanks for all this day. Donnie, I lost a co-worker yesterday. He was in his early 40s. He had a heart attack. And I was in a meeting with him just a few weeks ago. And when I got the message this morning, I thought, I missed an opportunity. I don't know where, what his where his heart was or anything like that but he has a young child and it's just been on my mind all day long today is I just wonder if he had everything in order oh, bless you, Richard. and I'm thankful that I can say I tried it in order and that sacrifice I'd give my life in a heartbeat but when it comes to my child or my, my boys or my grandbabies. Boy, I, I'd have to make long and hard. Bless you, Richard. Anything else? Okay. If there be no other impression, no one else has got anything. We love each and every one of you. We appreciate you being here tonight. Appreciate your prayers. Just continue to pray. Invite someone to come out and be a part of the spring revival here at Crossroads. Appreciate your prayerful attention to everything that you've done. We just give praise and honor unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing else tonight. Let's just lift up our hands and say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're liberty to go.